Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg. It, Hank, it's day two of madness, or of the full schedule of madness. Yesterday was amazing. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> that, that uh, Murray State, uh, Morant was unbelievable. Great player. I'll tell you, yeah, they were great. I'll tell you, a guy who blew it was the Belmont coach. Belmont should have won that game. They had the ball with 18 seconds left, and they played for one shot, and they dribbled the ball around far from the basket and then tried to pass the ball underneath, uh, and, the, and, the, and the pass was no good, and they never got a shot off. Uh, and they, they had a tremendous opportunity in that game to win. And uh, that was a very poor possession at the end of the game where they were one point down and uh, actually I thought should have won the game. Uh, that was a bad coaching job by him. Totally uh, agree. I totally agree, Hank. The uh, game was too big for him at that point. Uh, the game that surprised me, uh, I didn't know that Wolford was that good. I just thought that coming up against a Big East team like Seton Hall would uh, be too much for him. And, uh, but <laughs> that McGee, I, I, I never saw a shooting like that by anybody. And uh, they came out and, uh, you know, Seton Hall started to close. They got to within four points. And I thought Walford would fold and Seton Hall folded. Gave up 17 straight points at the end of that game. That was disgusting to watch if, you know, if you were from South Orange, New Jersey, as I am, uh, and the, which is where Seton Hall is located. But Walford, I'll tell you something, that team could go on. Those, those guys can really shoot. And not only that, but they're big, and uh, they've got that guy inside who can, uh, who's uh, uh, Jackson, I think his name is. Uh, he can really defend, and uh, he's, uh, he's a beast in there, and then they got. But they that outside shooting is too much. Yeah, I mean that that was an incredible. We saw some incredible performances yesterday. Um, the kid out of Murray State was unbelievable. He's great, great. Yeah, talent. I was having a great day until uh, that uh, Wofford game. I was wrong about them. I didn't think that. Uh, they would measure up against, you know, that coming from that conference going against the Big East team. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I thought Michigan would beat Montana big. I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, and uh, the other games that I had uh, were, were pretty good, actually. Murray State I had. Uh, Belmont I won with because they had the points. Uh, and uh, Auburn... Uh, Auburn had a, a nice lead and uh, went to sleep at the end and almost blew the game. I think they'll come back big uh, against Kansas. You know, Auburn, uh, just a note on that, they played a lot of games in very few period days. And then they were playing at altitude yesterday. And I, I'm not going to just say, and, you know, and the team they played has a lot of depth. Um, and... I'm not sure, but I think maybe the altitude got to them in this later in the game, and they just looked like they wilted on the vine. They got away with well, one. Well, he, he has a lot of players, and uh, they just uh, uh, they, they just couldn't score at the end. Uh, they just went cold for some reason. I don't know if it was the altitude or they just, uh, uh, you know, the other side just came on to finish, but they had a, they, they, you know, they had a nice lead, in the, you know, in the second half. Uh, they, they played their usual game. You know, they had, uh, you know, they went ahead by 10 points. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I really believe if you're not used to playing at altitude, it makes a difference. And uh, the, the other team just runs 10 deep at you. So but that, was, that was an interesting finish to that game. <laughs> the kid drives to the basket as, a, as an absolute easy layup, tosses it out for a three. Then their best free throw shooter misses two out of three. I mean, Auburn Auburn played well for most of that game, but the last few minutes, they kind of gave it well, up. They had no turnovers until the last four minutes. Yeah. Um, we got we got a big card today and tomorrow. 
in some of the games we uh, that we don't do a podcast on Saturday. Um, you know, you got tomorrow. We got some interesting games. Purdue four over Villanova. Um, you got Florida State five over Murray. You got LSU two and a half over Maryland. You got Kentucky five and a half over Wofford. Michigan State ten over Minnesota. There's a there's a rematch. That's a a conference rematch, uh, which is interesting. You got Michigan seven and a half over Florida. Auburn two over Kansas, and um, and that's another game at altitude. They're playing in altitude again. Um, and then you got Gonzaga thirteen over Baylor, and then you got a couple NIT games that I won't dig into right now. But uh, we've got an interesting card not only today but tomorrow as well. I don't think the all uh, the altitude is going to have much of an effect on Auburn tomorrow. Uh, they've got that game under the belt, and uh, Kansas is, uh, you know, Kansas is not very good right now. They just, uh, you know, they they had an easy game. Uh, what uh, Kansas? Uh, wait a second, Kansas is uh, isn't Kansas playing in Kansas City? They're playing in Salt Lake. Are right, they? Yeah, they play. They play. They're playing in Salt Lake. Oh, okay. I think they go to Kansas. The Kansas City. If they win this game, the next game will be in Kansas City. Yeah. Are you very well? It's going to be a high altitude for them too. Yeah. It is. Well, yeah. They. But they. Uh, they um, out. Yeah, definitely. Both in high altitude. I think Auburn, um, it, it seemed to affect Auburn a lot more yesterday. Than, but they were playing a team that runs a lot of players at you. And um, that might have made a difference. And good well, I'll, I'll say this for Auburn. Uh, the game was close in the first half. And uh, they ran up uh, a score on them in the second half. And they just started turning the ball over with three, you know, with four minutes left in the game, missing free throws, turning the ball over, and uh, committing dumb fouls. Well, no question about that. Absolutely, Baylor's going to play Gonzaga, thirteen point. Gonzaga's a thirteen point favorite in that game. They're also in Salt Lake City, and Gonzaga just they just smoked people yesterday. Um, I think Baylor will have a tough time against them. Well, Baylor got lucky. You know, they played against a Syracuse team that was missing one of their two best guys who was suspended. Yeah, that's unfortunate for that to happen in the, at a time like that. Um, very, very, very interesting situations out there. Today should be a good day. Got a lot of great matchups today. A lot of money came is coming in on Cal Irvine over Kansas State. That's been a big. Uh, well, Kansas State doesn't have, uh, you know, their best player. That's the problem there. Yeah. The. Um, Wade is Wade is out for Kansas State. That's it, killer for them. Yeah, they they. Um, Cal Irvine, kind of a deliberate team. They. Well coached, the hunt. The total on that game is one one nineteen. I think you can expect a, a very and the total on the Oregon Wisconsin one seventeen. Um, interesting. You're looking at a lot of defensive slow tempo games in the, in San Jose. Well, you know the interesting game uh, today is Arizona State and Buffalo. Bobby Hurley against his old team. And Arizona State, you know, they uh, in their playing game against St. John, St. John, watching that game, uh, they dominated St. John. And uh, you know, Arizona State is very well coached. They're aggressive, and uh, they can defend. And I think uh, I think Buffalo, which is a 
depends on scoring. He's going to have a tough time scoring against Arizona State. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it sure will. Um, Buffalo is, I don't know, do they have the most wins in college basketball this year? Uh, I think so, yeah. And, and they were a very high-scoring team. So. Yeah, total on that game uh, is 158. Yeah, that's a high, high number for today. One of the highest numbers for today. Um, we got we got some great great matchups uh, going forward. Nevada, talk, we talked about it the other day. Well, I tell you, there's something wrong with that that club. Uh, how can they consistently? Well, we talked about what uh, was wrong. I uh, I told you what uh, Bernie Prado had reported uh, from having covered their game, and you endorsed what he said because you had heard the same thing that. Uh, he had really worn out his team. He had a limited number of players that he was going to, and uh, and they were kind of uh, upset with uh, with the coach. And uh, there was uh, they played like a team that was in disarray. And and Florida, which is uh, you know a team that has trouble scoring, uh, scored pretty well against them, and and they came through and won. I'm not looking for Florida to go very far. No, they. Uh, that was a, that was a story of two halves. I mean, the first half was all Florida. The second half was all Nevada. Why they why they come out and get down to everybody? I mean, they've consistently done that, and uh, and then they come up with energy at the end. So it kind of like goes against the fact that they're tired or worn out. They come up with these big efforts in the second half. There's something wrong there. Um, and, and we'll probably learn more of now that the season is over for them. But then they get to deal with the teams we have going forward. I don't think North Carolina will have any trouble today against Iona. I think it's a bad matchup for Iona to go against them. Um, that's that's. I think that's a very tough matchup. I, I said on uh, the show Monday that I think North Carolina, uh, or I, I, I think that there's a good possibility that uh, they'll score 100 points against Iona. Very possible. Wouldn't it be interesting if we had a rematch of the Gonzaga-North Carolina uh, final championship game like we had two years ago? That, that could happen. Very, very possible. Very possible. Well, we'll see. Gonzaga's got an easy time so far. We'll see what happens. Next, you know, some of these teams, Kentucky didn't pull around. I mean, they won big. Uh, we'll see what Duke does today. I, they probably won't mess around too much either. Uh, but those are big numbers that they have to cover. Uh, certainly, we didn't bother Kentucky. Um, and uh, Michigan, uh, I, I took Michigan over Montana and gave the point and, and came out okay there. I thought that was a gift. Uh, but uh, moving forward till tomorrow, I think... Uh, I think there's some interesting games tomorrow, and I like I like a couple of dogs. Uh, uh, as far as today's games are concerned, uh, you know, we got uh, you know we talked about Kansas State, Oregon against Wisconsin. You know, you got Wisconsin, which is a totally different style of game than it was, that Oregon plays. Oregon's got the great guard play. Wisconsin. Uh, depends on half a lot, a lot. Um, Oregon's very well coached. Virginia Tech has Robinson back, and he and uh, you know they've got the, the two shooters, uh, but they're giving a lot of points against St. Louis, which will probably try to slow the game down against them. Uh, you know Houston. Let's see what they do. I was very high on them coming into this tournament, uh, and they did not play well at the very end. Uh, 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 Oklahoma has an interesting game against Mississippi. That's the game that's supposed to be a toss-up. That should be a pretty close game. So, uh, you know, it'll be fun to watch all day long today. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a, it's a marathon. <laughs> I love it. We all love it. Well, good luck to you today, Hank. Hank. Uh, We'll talk again. Big, Monday. Uh, big, big racing day tomorrow. Oh, good. Uh, 
at the uh, fairgrounds and uh, handicapped the race. And uh, I think uh, any one of four horses could win it. And uh, they're pretty well matched. You can, I think you can get uh, a pretty good payoff there. And uh, we'll be giving that out uh, tomorrow. So uh, you might want to call in and see. Last week we had the exact uh, in the second leg at, uh, at Oakland. So uh, this is uh, a big leg towards the Triple Crown. And uh, you've got uh, you know, some pretty good guys in there. And then Sunday is Sunland. Baffert has the, his fourth best horse, uh, Mucho Gusto, running there. And uh, there's a speed horse in there who could uh, pay a price and uh, hit the board, who I'll tell you about uh, if, if you're interested. So that's, uh, that's Sunday's card at Sunland, which is a, 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 a high-paying race. And the horses have come out of Sunland and done well in the Triple Crown races. So... Uh, it's a good, a good weekend for racing. Well, I, I know personally I'm always interested to know what you have in horses because you're very good at it. And everybody can get Hank's plays, mine as well, at jimfeist.com. So go there when you can and, and pick up uh, the basketball, baseball soon, horses in every weekend. And uh, Hank, have a great weekend. Good luck and be well. You too, Jim. Thank you. Okay.